Hello. Welcome to my corner of the World Wide Web. My name is Fats. My co-host is currently busy taking a nap. He works hard. I hope you're doing okay. And if you're not, that's okay too. This is a very low pressure corner of the internet. Now, what I have for you today is a TBR. Let me explain myself though, because we haven't done a TBR in a minute. And I've been a liar a lot on this channel. We've done hauls, we've done library hauls, we've done pickups. But due to the way that I used to put library books on hold, I would put them on hold whenever I heard about something. So I had this constant influx of library books. And it didn't help that I lived a 10 minute walk away from my local library. So I could put them on hold, return things, pick them up. I never knew what was in the house. I never knew what was due soon. I was reading to reach due dates. It really affected how I read. Now, instead, I'm putting large stacks on hold and I'm going to get to everything before I put another stack on hold. This allows me to do two things. One, actually get to the books that I'm excited about. And two, make this into the spoiler channel that I desperately want it to be. I have struggled with the concept of making a spoiler channel because I don't know how to forewarn you about what I'm possibly going to spoil. And the answer seemed to be, get my hold capabilities and hold habits under control so that we could get through things together and now this will also help because if there's anything in this stack that you desperately want me to throw into a vlog let me know right now and i'll try to sneak it in i do tend to talk but if there's anything that you want specific live reactions from ask If I haven't gotten to it or I haven't pre-filmed it, I don't see why not. If you want me to sit on something or bring up themes or you have questions now, let me know. We can spoil together. It can be a bit more interactive in that because now you see what's in the house. And I do believe this stack will take me about two months. So you have about two months of reads for me. The only thing you don't see are the things I put on hold on Libby. I can't control my hold habits on Libby. I can't control what I'm getting. It's very chaotic on there. I don't know when I'm going to get it. It tells me my audiobook life is just going to be surprise spoilers, I guess. And I apologize for that. All that to say, this is me marking the point in which I get to do more of what I want to do on this channel. And that's talk about books from start to finish. Every little thing that bothers me and I think about or every little thing that happens It's how I started this channel and it's how I want this channel to go. I just kind of got mixed up in my head and I needed a second to backhand myself a little bit and tell myself why I like books. (sighs) Ramble done. Let's get into the stack. First two books are subscriber recommendations. Thank you. Thank you. If you have recommended me a book on this channel before, I had some weird things happening with how my comments show up. Please re-recommend. Always recommend. I do try to get to them. They do show up. Now that my hold list is doing better and my book getting habits are cleaner, I can actually incorporate recommendations in a way that allows interaction. This first recommendation is one that I never got to and I want to apologize. I see you. I hear you. And I know you hate me. The book is Betty. This is a coming-of-age novel of a young girl existing in a marginalized body and having to grow up experiencing racism, sexism, and the effects and the growth and kindness, hatred, evilness, society, what it means to live in this body, learn to love this body, while constantly being told that it's this awful thing. I don't know what happens. I know that this book has people crying. My other subscriber recommendation, again, thank you. I am so grateful to everybody that gives me a recommendation. An Unkindness of Ghosts by Rivers Solomon. This is a speculative social commentary science fiction novel. All my people who loved The Deep, read this one with me. I'm excited about it. I don't know if you want me to say your name, but everybody say thanks to a subscriber for this one and the talk that we're going to have because I know it's going to be good. Now, check two. We're on the Matilda, a spaceship taking us to the promised land. Our narrator is of darker skin. and People call our narrator ogre, monster, 
these horrible names and these evil things. But there comes a day where our narrator has an idea of how to improve life on the Matilda. We have people in power pass away. We have power structures crumbling. And in our existence, at the bottom of the food chain, we have thoughts, we have ideas. I'm excited because this gives me the science fiction that I love. We all know science fiction is a new thing for me. This is giving me exactly what I need. Thank you again. Next, I want to talk about a chatty video that I do have coming up. And that is my next weird literary video. I chose five random books. Took me a second to research them and hunt them down. But we've got five books in my next weird literary chat. First is The Garden. The Garden is a story of a husband and wife who have been struggling to get pregnant and them finding this house hospital ran by another man and woman who have a surprise amazing cure and treatment for women who are unable to give birth the rust will also be in my weird lit video this one is so weird that i had to write down what it was about so this story acts as a bridge between the 19th and 20th centuries and we follow a national monument to liberty. And we follow three storylines. The sculptor and his lover, an orphan locked and imprisoned in an American prison with a caseworker trying to save him, and a construction worker and his magical time-traveling daughter. This story is said to open your heart and allow it to bleed. It's supposed to feel like a cleansing sort of sadness in its weirdness and in its narrative. I don't quite know what themes I'm coming into this with. I just know that it's literary and it's weird. You can tell by the cover of this one. Next, I have The Water Cure. This is a story of three sisters raised to fear men. And they go into this place of isolation. The only man who raised them to fear men, though, was their father. And their father goes missing one day. And in that same day, two men and a boy wash ashore this island that they have built as refuge from men. And it goes into femininity, masculinity, fear, the body, um, and just all of these things of, in the weirdest, most literary way, what it is to be a woman, to interact with men, the relationships in that, and what it is to exist in this fear. The water cure. Just in the realm of weird, I have cursed bread. This is based actually on a true story of a town that was poisoned or a town that got really sick and believed to be poisoned. But this is a story of obsession. A story of obsession in the baker's wife and a couple that come to town. And kind of just the hysteria and envy and misery that comes with obsession, devotion, and love. And then I decided that to balance all of these out, I would put in a literary story of romance and again more obsession devotion and love um this instead follows oh i didn't even say the title this is a thirst for salt this follows an unnamed narrator who is now 37 and she reflects on a phase in her life between graduating from college and a lapse in which she decided what would happen next. She has this love affair with an older man. And like I said, it's a lapse. So we're entering into this, I believe, knowing that it ends, knowing there is an end to this affair of romance with this older man. Just so you remember the five books that will be in this chatty video. 
I'm going to handle this chat the same way I handle all of my chats. I'm going to have interviews. I'm going to have articles. I'm going to look into the history of all of the authors. I'm going to look into meanings and I'm going to look at other people's thoughts. And then from that, I'm going to put together my own thoughts. The Garden by Claire Beams. Thirst for Salt by Madeline Lucas. Cursed Bread by Sophie McIntosh. The Water Cure by Sophie McIntosh. And Thrust by Lydia Yukonovich. Not specifically for a chatty video, I do have a few more things. Lucy Undying. Now, this is a new release. Lucy is Dracula's first victim, and we go through her life as she seeks to escape his clutches. I do think this is the worst version of Dowry of Blood. I haven't heard good reviews about this. I heard it's horribly boring. The cover is beautiful, though. So I picked it up. We all know covers get me. Red, white, and royal blue. I needed a cute little romancy thing in here. And I've heard so many good things about this. I've had this one on hold before as well. Didn't get to it. This is a, an enemies to lovers. We've got gays. We've got fake dating. We've got kingdoms. We've got travel. We've got misunderstanding, miscommunication. And I hear the love confession in this one is to die for. Another new release, We Used to Live Here. This is a haunting. I believe what happens is there is a queer couple who works to flip houses. And then one day somebody comes knock, knock, knocking on the door and says, I used to live here. And then Shiznit starts hitting the fan. Now, here is one of those young adult romances that I said that I was excited about. This one is hyped up. This one has a cult following. This one has booktube in arrears. Well, it did. I still think it has a clutch on a lot of people. I only have the first book. We're going to read the first book this month. And if we like it, we'll finish it. We'll finish the series a different month. The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. I have no idea what this book is about. I'm here because it was hyped up, and I do think it's enemies to lovers, and we all know I am a whore for enemies to lovers. Another video idea I have, prepare for things to be dangerously spoiled in this one. I have a few books where there were some books that TikTok and BookTube influenced so many of us to read. So many of us. And in that hype, so many of us were disappointed. And we said, we'll never finish this series again. I was one of those people. I'm a liar. I thought it would be fun for me to finish a couple of series that disappointed us. I will be finishing the Powerless series. I have the novella, Powerful, and the next book, Reckless. I will also be finishing the Divine Rivals duology. I have Ruthless Vows. We all know I felt a lot of strong emotions with Divine Rivals. Now, the thing about these books is I know I hated the first book. I'm not rereading the first book. I'm not doing it. You can't make me. So I'm going into these with a little bit of forgotten details. I hope that I remember. I'm not doing the proper research for them. You, I really, I know I didn't like them. I know I didn't. My last new release on my list is The Silence Factory. Now, this is by Bridget Collins. I don't know what this book is about. I just know that at one point, I had some Bridget Collins on hold. That was The Binding. Um, I tried to get it on hold. The hold list for it is extensive. I was actually able to get this before that. I don't know what it's about. I just know that Bridget Collins is an author that I have had interest in before. So when I saw that this was new, I saw it at my bookstore. So I put it all out of the library. I got it within a week. Silence Factory. My last young adult duology that I am so excited for. I heard this gave you the same amount of joy and feelings as the Six of Crows duology did. And that is 
Dance of Thieves and Vow of Thieves. I also don't know what these are about. I googled books that would make me feel as good as Six's Crows did, that would give me the same level of little sprinkling of romance, but also betrayal and heist and danger. And they told me Dance of Thieves and Vow of Thieves is what I wanted if I loved Six of Crows. So I put it on hold. I got it. I didn't see what it was about. They're big boys. But I'm really excited for them. Six of Crows was such a highlight in my reading journey. Now, I have a few books that are recent purchases that I would like to get through because I do have some books that in my personal collection that I really want to get to. So every every stack will have some personal purchases, some books that I own that I'm going to want to get through. I'm going to also try to do one nonfiction in every stack. And uh, oh, wait, I forgot to tell you about the chatty video that I'm most excited about. We're going to talk Sally Rooney. I have all of her books. I have all of them. I have every single one. I have normal people. Now, I've actually read this one already. I've annotated it. I've tabbed some of these pages. Normal people. Look at that flop. That's 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 a good book. Um, Sally Rooney, Normal People. Beautiful world, where are you? Conversations with friends. And intermezzo. Another one that I just purchased. I'm entering all of these blind. I do find that when I look up the synopsis prior, I go in with expectations for a book. So all of those Sally Rooney books, I'm going into blind. I'm not going to tell you about them. Good reads them. I'm going to do a huge chatty video for that one. Please read them so that we can hang out and we can talk about it. And I can... I'm not spoiling how I'm feeling right now. I'm not going to do it. But you guys know me. You know me. I'm a hater. (laughs) You know me. You think I'm just going to enter into some chatty video, like, they're so perfect. That's not gonna happen. Let's be real here. And I hate to say it, when my body is not represented in a story, let me put it this way. If there is a black person in the story, I'm adding two stars in solidarity. If black bodies are not represented, Those two stars of solidarity don't exist. I'm the problem. I am. But like, it can't just be positivity. I'm over here excited about all this young adult fiction. I'm excited about the weird lit. I'm excited about things. So come on, we need balance. (laughs) Not me justifying how toxic I am. (laughs) My recent purchases, let's talk about them. I'm excited about them. When I purchase a book... It's because I know I'm going to like it, or I know I'm going to have thoughts about it. First one is a national book finalist, and that is Geek Love by Catherine Dunn. Now, this has a Shakespearean, almost Greek tragedy essence to it, in which there is a family, a collection of people, who are carnies, but it is in their own experimentation that they have created these carny people. And I know that some of them are Arturo, the aqua boy who has flippers for limbs. Ify and Ellie, the Siamese twins. And Ali, the hunchback. They also have Chick, who is outwardly normal. And I think that's what makes this so delicious of a novel. It goes into normalcy. It goes into weirdness. It goes into feeling like an outsider. It goes into love, family, and all of that. But I do think this falls into my weird sort of lit. I had put this on hold at one point, and I had gotten through like the first couple of pages, and I just love the way it is written. Um, That's usually what gets me. If I love how words are strung together, 
I'm happy with what I have in front of me. Chapter 1, page 1. The Nuclear Family. His talk, her teeth. When your mama was the geek, my dreamlets, Papa would say, she made the nipping off of noggins such a crystal mystery that the hens themselves yearned toward her, waltzing around her, hypnotizing and longing. Spread your lips, sweet lil, they cluck, and show us your chompers. The same crystal lil, our star-haired mama, sitting snug on the built-in sofa that was Artie's bed at night, would chuckle at the sewing in her lap and shake her head. Don't piffle to the children, owl. Those hens ran like whiteheads. Nights on the road this would be, between shows and towns and some camping or pull-off with the other vans and trucks and trailers of Beniski's Carnival Fabulon ranged up around us, safe in our portable village. After supper, sitting with full bellies in the lamp glow, we Benuskis were supposed to read and study. But if it rained, the story mood would sneak up upon Papa. The hiss and tick on the metal of our big living van distracted him from his papers. Rain on a show night was catastrophe. Rain on the road meant talk, which for Papa was pure pleasure. It's a shame and pity, Lil, he'd say. That these offspring of yours should only know the slumming summer geeks from Yale. Princeton, dear, Mama would correct him mildly. Randall will be a sophomore this year. I believe he's our first Princeton boy. We children would sense our story slipping away to trivia. Artie would nudge me and I'd pipe up with, Tell me about the time when Mama was the geek. And Artie and Ellie and Iffy and Chick would all slide into line with me on the floor between Papa's chair and Mama. Woof. Going to get through that one. My nonfiction choice was a purchase. The language of trees. Now, this isn't necessarily a subscriber recommendation, but I still want to thank a subscriber for opening my mind into a world of nonfiction that I never thought that I would get into. Thank you. You know who you are. Thank you. Um, And that was... Literature that opens my mind to the earth, to nature, this green nonfiction, these green stories, these green memoirs. I picked this up for that reason. Now, this is just a collection of writings from authors, philosophers, and scientists who work into this aspect of the language of trees. And it's just so beautiful. The Print is actually like a soft green. There's poems in here. There's pictures in here. I am so excited to get through this. I love writing in books. I'm a book annotator, but this is so beautiful. I don't even want to put my own handwriting in it. But at the same time, what are books except a discussion of thoughts? So I might write in it. I don't know. That's my nonfiction choice for the stack. And lastly, let me tell you, how this one was marketed because I put it on hold due to the fact of how it was marketed. And uh, I don't care if it's a horrible or good. The premise has me in love with it. Now it's marketed as a new song of Achilles. That's In Memoriam by Alice Wynn. This is just gay love in World War I that isn't meant to be. It has the poesy of experiencing death around you and experiencing love and not being able to give that love. But this one has an aspect instead that these two don't know the other has these feelings for them. But I do think there's an aspect of like found family and friendship that is also woven in here just devastatingly. That is one of my new pickups from the bookstore that I would like to get through. That's my TBR. If any of these catch your eye, if anything is exciting to you, please let me know. If there's anything that you think is exciting, you have a recommendation, let me know for my next stack. This is what we're doing. And again, this is my way of warning you that this is about to become a spoiler channel because I really want to talk about some books. It didn't hit me until I was finishing a few thrillers and the endings punched me in the face and I wanted to talk about the endings. I think I should be able to do that because I've warned you. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for joining me. I hope to see you again and I hope you're reading some of the best books.
Please tell me if I'm entering into any of these and I need to emotionally prepare to cry. I need to emotionally prepare to be upset or I need to emotionally prepare for a little bit of feet kicking. We all know I love a feet kick. And I'll talk to you next time.